in a state that you are Muslim. Oh Allah Ta'ala, I will be in the Shaitan Rajim, in the Sunday, the Rahman Rahim. Ya, in your hands, Tapur of Bakula, the Halakatum in Natsuma, Hida, the Halaka Minha, the Ujaha, or Betta Minuma, Rijal and Katira, and Wanisa, what Tapullah, the Ritasa, Aluna Behiva, and Aha, in the Mahaka and Alekum Rakiba. O mankind, fear Allah, who has created you from a single soul, and from it, He created its partner, and from both of them, he created, he, he spread forth multitude of men and women. And fear, and fear him from who, in whose name you ask for your rights. And fear the rights of kinship. So Allah is reminding us in, the, in this Qutbat al that we uh, recite every week, Allah is reminding us of the importance of Taqwa. And uh, here he is, saying, he is telling us to fear Allah whom we demand our mutual rights based on. So you see in society that a lot of times, a lot of rights cannot be imposed except by the fear of an ultimate being that he is going, you are going to be accountable to him. So he is telling you so you, you ask others for your own rights, so fear him in whose name you ask others of your own rights. And fear the rights of kinship. Meaning he is reminding us the importance of uh, holding the ties of kinship. Your parents and their relatives, your brothers, your sisters, so from close of uh, family and it spreads. So you have to call them, talk to them, and maintain these ties of kinship. If they need help, maintain that. Ya ayyuha al-lazina aamunu attaqullaha haqq Ya ayyuha al-lazina aamunu attaqullaha wa kulu qawlan sadida yuslih lakum a'amalakum wa yaqfir lakum dhunubakum wa man yuti illaha wa rasoolahu faqad faza fawzan azima O you have believed, fear Allah and speak a truthful, a righteous speech yuslih lakum a'amalakum He will mend the affairs for you, your affairs for you and forgive for you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his Rasul has indeed attained a, a success, a great success. Audhu billahi minash shaitani rajeem wa man yarrabu an millati barahima illa man safiha nafsah وَلَقَدْ اصْطَفَيْنَاهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ So with that I come to the topic of this khutbah which is in relation to what we are going to witness tomorrow which is the Eid al-Abha and a lot of rituals that we do in this, on this day and the Hajjaj do on this day are, re are related to this one person which is Ibrahim alayhi salam and Allah here in these ayat asks us a rhetorical question which is who turns away from the millah of Ibrahim except the one who has befooled his own self so as you know the purpose of rhetorical questions is really not to seek an answer but it is instructive. Allah is trying to teach us a lesson over here. And that's why He is asking us this rhetorical question. <coughs> and immediately after this question, Allah is testifying that He is indeed one of the chosen people in this world and the hereafter. So, so basically, if you follow, what has been going on uh, before the, these ayat in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah is addressing the Bani Israel and reminding them because the Bani Israel always had this pride that they are the chosen people. And they call themselves Bani Israel based on the name of Yaqub salam, the other name of Yaqub salam, which is Israel. And they claim that they were chosen be people because they were the sons of Israel or Yaqub salam. 
But Allah is reminding them, so what about Ibrahim? Ibrahim is much before Yaqub alayhi salam, like he is the father of Ibrahim alayhi, uh, of Yaqub alayhi salam. And what, how come the people forgot this legacy? How come Bani Israel forgot this legacy? So he's reminding them, who turns away from the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam except the people who have befooled themselves? And later on, in, when the next Jews begins, he again addresses them in the same way, wherein he has Yaqulu Sufaha. So he's talking about these people who have turned away from the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam, Sufi people. So this is not to call people names. This is for us, me, you, and all the Muslims to ponder over. Why is Allah calling these people stupid, right? Allah doesn't call people stupid just for the you know, sake of, it is instructive. It is instructive for us, all of us. So the, the importance of stories in the Quran is to teach us lessons. So all these stories that you read about Bani uh, Israel or all the nations before are to teach you a lesson. So, from, so if Allah is addressing Bani Israel, it is also a lesson for us. So now, Allah is, after asking this rhetorical question, He has testified that He is the chosen person in this world and the hereafter. And then at this moment, let us stop and ponder and think, what made Him the chosen person? What are the special qualities of Ibrahim salam that Allah is testifying about Him that He is one of the chosen people? Allah immediately follows in the ayah, إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ When Allah said to him, submit, he said, I submit to the Lord of the worlds, or Lord of the jinn and the uh, humans. So here we learn the importance of submitting to the commands of Allah. Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he was ordered, submit, he said, I submit immediately not giving excuses, not waiting until we have like lived our life, you know, lived our youth. When, when I become old, I'll do all that stuff. You know, when I go to Hajj, you know, I'll give up everything. No. Allah told Ibrahim alayhi salam, Aslim, qal aslam tuli rabbil alameen. He said, I submit to the Lord of the world. The second quality of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So he himself submitted, right? And then, after that, وَوَصَّى بِهَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ بَنِيهِ وَيَعْقُوبُ يَا بَنِيَّ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَى لَكُمُ الدِّينَ فَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُ مُسْلِمُونَ And Ibrahim advised his sons, and so did Yaqub. He advised his sons. وَوَصَّى بِهَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ وَوَصَّى بِهَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ بَنِيهِ وَيَعْقُوبُ يَا بَنِيَّ Oh my children! إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَى لَكُمُ الدِّينَ فَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Allah has chosen for you a way of life, so do not die except that you are a Muslim. So this is a lesson for us. It's not just about maintaining our own deen, our own Islam. A lot of us struggle to keep our own iman in, in, in this country especially, or in the West in general, wherein there is so much materialism. There is direction for religion. Everybody mocks at religion. So it's very difficult a lot of times for youngsters in this, like, you know, information bombardment and, you know, the popular culture where religion is looked down upon to maintain your own iman. But Ibrahim alayhi salam not only did maintain his own iman, but he is worried about his children. And you learn in other places, he's not just worried about his own immediate children. He is worried about generations to come, as we have learned in the, in the ayat preceding this, wherein he is uh, talking to Allah and asking Allah for guidance for his, for his generations to come. So, what he did. So first, so from this let us stop and think about our own lives. Where are we going? At this moment in time, do you, each one of you, do you think, are you prepared when you have a family, that you will be able to guide your children about Islam. How many of us would be capable of teaching our own children the Quran? Forget about the detailed instructions or the detailed tafsir. I'm talking about basic minimum. 
which is just the reading of the Quran. How many of us are prepared for this? If we are not prepared, let us make a commitment to ourselves that we are going to learn the Quran ourselves and then teach it to our children. And, and I'll tell you, this is the best time that you will have with your family. Sit down with your children. A lot of you do not have families, but you know, there is nothing wrong in you know, aspiring to do this because if you aspire to do this, and you know, anybody can die anytime. Maybe you will not have a family. Maybe uh, you know you will not be able to do it up to as much as you had aspired for. But Allah will reward you even for the intentions if you if you put the effort in. So from this day, make a commitment to yourself that you will learn the Quran, you will learn the word of Allah, and try to teach it to the generation. And th there cannot be a stronger connection to the religion of Allah than to the Quran. So make the small commitment to yourself. So here Ibrahim السلام, he advised his children, do not die except that you are in a state of Islam. So it's not just about teaching them the rituals or teaching them the, uh, you know, the Quran just to read it. But he is trying to drive home this point. The life you live should be as a Muslim. So what are the qualities of Muslim? So if you do not live a life of a Muslim, how are you going to tell your children to live the life of a Muslim? A Muslim is generous. A Muslim is, submits to Allah. A Muslim follows Sunnah. These are a few things that we can think about. So make this commitment. And not only Ibrahim alayhi salam, but after him, Yaqub alayhi salam, when he is about to die, the most important thing on his list is not the inheritance that he is going to give to them or nothing else. All he is worried about is La ilaha illallah. And we might be thinking, oh well, I'm a good Muslim. You know, I'm not worried about that. But as you might have learned, that there cannot be a better lineage than the lineage of Yaqub salam or the children of Yaqub salam, Because Ibrahim salam, Ishaq salam, Yaqub salam, all of them are Anbiya. And, you know, if, if they are worried about it, they should be worried about, you know, so-called more important things than the basics, which is La ilaha illallah. But trust me, you have to pass this on to the generations that come. And La ilaha illallah is not just about, you know, we just worship Allah. All that we do, everything, anything that contradicts the word of Allah or the sunnah of Rasulullah, we do not do that. So we have to learn all those things and imbibe this, uh, this culture and this knowledge in our children. And if, if, if you are not worried at this point, let me tell you, it has happened in the history here in this land, in America, wherein slaves were brought from Africa. And now two years, three, three, uh, two generations or three generations after they were brought, the, parent, the grandparents or the great grandparents were Muslim. And a lot of, you know, all these football players or basketball players that you see, they have all these Muslim names. But they have been Christian all their lives. And they get the, all these names just because it's been going on in their family. That's their only relationship to Islam. If you are not going to invest time, if you are not going to drive the importance of Islam into the lives of your children, it's not, it's not going to work. Because my son just started going to kindergarten. And all he talks about when he comes back home is Halloween. He's just talking about pumpkin crafting and all that stuff. And I tell him, you know, we're going to do Eid tomorrow. We're not going to do Halloween. And he says, no, why? You know, of course, you're going to face all this. There's going to be all these pressures from outside. But you have to guide them. You don't have to, like, you know, no, we don't do that. You know, of course, that's not going to work. You have to guide them through. But you're not going to be able to do that until you do what Ibrahim alayhi salam did, submit yourself first and foremost. And inshallah I'll continue after this. الحمد لله 
الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. Now I will just try to uh, highlight to you one other quality of Ibrahim alayhi salam, and then inshallah we'll pray after that. This one quality of Ibrahim alayhi salam, after his family, his concern for his own family, he was worried about his father, he was worried about his children, then is his concern for his community. You know how he tried to reason with people, how he tried to teach them by breaking the idols. It was not because, you know, he was a rash person. He didn't break the idols because, you know, he just wanted to go and do stuff. No, it was an instructive thing. He wanted to teach them a lesson and he knew his community better than anybody else. He knew that his community would learn a lesson and they did. After learning the lesson, you know, they, didn't, they could not come back with any reasonable uh, reasons as to why they worship these idols. But, you know, they just wanted to force their uh, ideologies upon Ibrahim salam, and then they wanted to throw him into fire. But how did Ibrahim salam respond? To his, to his immediate family which did not respond? Or to the community in general? And you see the example of his father. His father said, I did not believe. He drove him away from home. How did Ibrahim salam respond? He said, I'll make dua for you until Allah tells me not to. And he prayed for his forgiveness. And this, this father is like the factory from where idols are generated. All the shit that is being committed in the community, he is the source. He's, he's generating all those idols. But Ibrahim salam is praying for him. So from this, we learn that when we go about preaching to, our, like, you know, we have, you know, alhamdulillah, you know, sell our own lives a little bit, and then we start talking to people, you know, our own family or people in the community, and of course, the reaction is not going to be the same. Some people are going to, like, you know, accept your invitation, some people will reject it, and they'll, at, at, at sometimes they'll do it in a very uh, hideous manner. They're going to be very harsh to you like Ibrahim salam's dad was. But what did he do? How did he respond? Was he harsh in retaliation? No. So this was his own immediate family. But what about the community in general? So you learn in the Quran that the malaika that had come to uh, uh, you know, punish the Qawm Lut, who committed the worst, one of the worst crimes that can ever happen, which is homosexuality. And how did Ibrahim salam, when he learned of this news that they're going to punish this problem, how did he respond? So Ibrahim salam, he's trying to come up with reasons to delay this punishment. He's trying to ask Allah. Allah delay this punishment. So he's like, you know, trying to tell Allah, oh, Lut is still there, you know, uh, just delay the punishment. But when the punishment of Allah comes, he's the one who makes decisions. But still, Ibrahim salam until the last moment. They committed all other crimes and on top of that, they committed this one of these worst crimes that can ever happen on this face of this earth. And still Ibrahim salam is asking Allah to forgive them. So how, how, how do we incorporate this lesson in our lives? So you see, of course, now, you know, homosexuality is coming up, but there are other sins that are more, that are even worse than homosexuality. For example, shirk. Shirk is the worst crime that can ever be committed on the face of this earth. There cannot be any crime worse than shirk. And they, they, there are mushrikun all around us. How, how, how do we respond to this? So we learn from the legacy of Ibrahim salam, and then the legacy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about whom Allah testifies, this is the person, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is the closest to the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So we follow the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. How he went about responding to the mushrikeen of the Makkah. Did he respond in a rash manner? Did he just go about telling his band of, you know, a few followers, just go kill everybody? Or, you know, we're just going to fight. No, he was patient. He was patient up to the point that they stoned him until he bled. They banished him from the city that he loved. But still, what did he do? And then on the day of uh, Fat, when he has all the rights 
to like you know avenge all the things that had been done to him. What did he say? He said, "Go. There is nothing upon you, people." And these were people who harmed his own immediate family, his spouse, his children. They made fun of him. They mocked him. Not just that, they harmed him physically. They harmed his uncle physically. You know of Hamza uh, 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 so, so much so that like they mutilated his dead body. So can any one of us imagine seeing like you know a mutilated body of our own close uh, relative and be able to forgive? And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did forgive this person who had killed Hamza radiallahu. He just said, "Don't show me your face, you know, because it reminds me of his memories." So he he forgave him. So we should learn from this that we should not respond in a harsh manner to the people when we invite them. We invite them in a good way, and of course there is going to be harsh reaction, but we, we should be patient with them, and the, the goal should be to, to guide them to Allah and what He has ordered, rather than impose you know, what we think they should be doing at this moment in time. Guidance comes from Allah, and our, our responsibility is just to uh, convey the word. So to, just to summarize, uh, of, uh, summarize this khutbah uh, and in relation to the Eid that we are going to celebrate tomorrow, uh, the sunnah of Ibrahim alayhi salam, we learn three things of what he did during his life. First, he submitted himself to what Allah had commanded him. Second, he made it a priority uh, to, uh, to guide and you know, mentor his own family, his children, and his uh, you know, immediate relatives. And then he uh, went about preaching to the community in general, and he did this in a wise manner and not in a very rash manner. And he was very patient, and Ibrahim alayhi salam sunnah is best embodied in the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So let us just uh, go out uh, with these reminders. Uh, and inshallah, when we celebrate tomorrow, remember these uh, sunnah of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ba'dullah taqullah inna Allah ta'ala ya'amu bil adri wal ihsan wa ita'i din qurba wa yanha an al fashai wal munkari wal ba'd. يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر أقيم الصلاة